so after just over 26 hours, the electrolysis is finally finished, and we've got our complete uh, cell liquor, which should be um, one sixth of the bromide has been converted to bromate. And the yellow color is there still, obviously, because of the uh, hexavalent chromium. You, I, I've got the top of this capped off a little bit because it smells like a pool, so that's why I'm doing the rest of this outside. You might be able to see on the bottom of the beaker, or the mason jar rather, there's uh, some black dust collected. That's bits of the carbon um, electrodes that have spalled off uh, during the electrolysis. And that usually happens. I mean, the good thing about carbon is that it's, it's not reactive with anything, um, but they do tend to fall apart. I'm actually very impressed with my electrodes because after 26 hours of running, there's hardly any uh, carbon particles left over. But I'm still going to filter those carbon p particles off into uh, another jar here, and I just got some standard filter paper that I'm going to go through. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention I'm using a glass funnel and all glass apparatus for this um, because bromine is very corrosive to plastics. So you don't want to use, say, a plastic pipette to transfer bromine from one thing to another, and you don't want to use plastic funnels um, to filter things uh, containing bromine because of this. I mean, th this solution shouldn't have any actual bromine in it, um, but I figure, you know, just to be safe, I might as well use the glass since I have it. All right, now we are going to add the acid to the solution. And uh, luckily enough, today's a windy day, so that's good for me. Um, you definitely want to be, you've got to be outside to do this. Um, and it's probably even a good idea to have a couple of fans blowing on you, because bromine is just as bad as chlorine, and possibly worse because it, it, it is heavier than air, so it sticks around wherever you're at. So what I'm going to do is add the acid uh, slowly, about 100 milliliters at a time, to the solution and swirl it around in between additions. It's going to heat up too, so you don't want to add it all at once. You see the beautiful, beautiful red color of bromine. Oh yeah, that heated up a good bit. You can see the bromine fumes are accumulating above the, the solution already. Yeah, now I don't want this to get too hot because then the bromine is going to vaporize and I'm going to be losing some of it. So I think possibly in between additions, we'll uh, take the funnel out and stopper it. And just give it some, a minute to cool. Okay, I got a bucket of uh, chilled water that I've been uh, putting the uh, flask into in between additions. Ooh, you see all the fumes come out. Once again, why I'm doing this outside. Let's add another addition of acid. That's... That's kind of cool. Some kind of precipitate. Let's swirl it around a bit. <laughs> well, you can see the fumes. <laughs> That's interesting.
Let's put that back in the ice water. So let's add the remaining acid. All right, now that all the acid has been added, I'm going to uh, put this into the, uh, the cold bucket here and let it sit for a while. And hopefully, all the bromine that's in there is going to coalesce into a blob on the bottom of the solution. So I've let the bromine solution sit overnight, and you can see it's settled out really nicely. Uh, it's nice and clear solution, and on the bottom you can very clearly see elemental bromine sloshing around. So, now what we need to do is separate that, and I'm going to use a SEP funnel to do it. So before I put it into the SEP funnel, I'm going to pour off the majority of this liquid. And uh, I've got my lab coat and gloves on because this step you definitely you don't want to get any of this on you uh, and of course I'm using all glass apparatus again because bromine attacks plastic and it's another nice and windy day There we go. Alright, so now we'll pour the remainder of the solution, here it is, into the separatory funnel. Alright, it's been a few minutes and you can see there's still uh, a cloudy layer in between the uh, bromine and the bromine water. Uh, so it hasn't quite settled all the way, but I think that's okay. Because what I'm more concerned about is it's leaking a little bit. So you can see down here there's some bromine vapor in the flask and especially around the stopcock there's lots of uh, bromine. So I would rather just get it out of here than let everything settle out completely. So we'll drain this off now. So it turns out that cloudiness actually wasn't uh, some kind of mixing layer, it's some kind of crystal. So something has precipitated, and that's very interesting. That may actually be uh, those impurities that was in the bisulfate, I don't really know. But here it is, my yield of elemental bromine. It looks like about 20 milliliters or so. You can see it's an incredibly dark liquid. Uh, it looks black uh, with a very thick red vapor above it. 
So bromine is nearly impossible to store for any length of time. No matter what bottle you put it in, it's going to escape from it. It'll find its way out. Um, so what I'm going to do is ampule some of this in a sealed glass container for permanent storage on my element display. And the rest of it I'll use up within the next couple of days in some other experiments that I'll be posting. I've waited a long time to get bromine and I'm very excited to have it. So now that I've got my elemental bromine, uh, I want to dry it before I ampule it. And drying is necessary because there's still a little bit of water that's dissolved into this bromine. And that's going to cause it to uh, stick to the sides of glass a little bit and I don't want that for a nice element sample. And you know it's also good to be dry for if you're going to use it for any experiments. Uh, so the way I'm going to dry it is to use concentrated sulfuric acid. So we're going to add that. And you can also see that I added some ice to this to uh, keep fuming down to a minimum. So we'll add the uh, acid to the bromine. And this is actually a pretty good way to store bromine is under sulfuric acid. Because it helps to keep fuming down to a minimum and it helps to dry everything. And that will give that a good swirl to mix everything. Uh, you should be able to see the two layers. It's a little, little difficult to see because they're both very dark, but there are two layers there. And of course, when I'm swirling like this, I got a vent often. So while that's settling out, let's talk about disposal. So here's one of the containers I had. This is all just gas. This is all bromine vapor in here. Um, there's very little liquid. My other container is full of liquid that's got a whole bunch of bromine in it. Um, now the, the liquid has probably just as much bromine dissolved in the water. Uh, and the way I could recover that is by distillation. But that's not something I really want to do. Uh, one, because it's a lot of work to do the distillation. Uh, and two, the primary reason is because distillation inherently produces a lot of vapor. And that's not something that I want to do without a fume hood. I, even though I'm outside, uh, bromine is just not pleasant to work around. Even what I've done here with pretty minimal uh, vapor exposure is has not been a fun experience for me. It uh, smells horrible. Uh, the name bromine actually comes from the Greek word for stench. So, uh, so anyways, I'm going to dispose of all the rest of this stuff. So the way I'm going to do that is to use uh, sodium thiosulfate solution. So I got a one molar solution here and uh, let's see if that can get rid of the vapor. And now we'll swirl that around a bit. Look at that. <laughs> Completely clears it up. That's fantastic. So what that did is that reduced the bromine back to uh, harmless bromide. Uh, which fell back into solution. So that's what I'm going to do for the, the all the liter of liquid that I have left over uh, to destroy the, the residual bromine water. So here's my finished product of elemental bromine ampuled up for permanent storage. It looks beautiful. This is one of my favorite elements. It's the only other liquid at room temperature besides mercury. And as I said before, ampuling is really the only way to store this permanently. You can see the uh, top is, is sealed shut, it's melted closed. So this is everything that I gathered minus a little bit that I used for some experiments which I'll be posting pretty soon. Thanks a lot for watching.